So we're here at AOL seeing some unique new companies out of Stanford's StartX Labs. But the first one is uh, DiffBot, which is looking at pages visually and building an API that programmers can see all sorts of stuff from that page, like headlines, titles, the picture that's on that page, and even the layout itself. <laughs> Who are you? So I'm Mike Tung, I'm the CEO of DiffBot. I'm also an entrepreneur in residence at StartX, which is uh, Stanford University's accelerator. Uh, so I'm a Stanford PhD student on leave of absence to do my own startup, and we're incubated here at the AOL building, and uh, AOL is actually one of our clients too. Very cool. Uh, what is DiffBot? So DiffBot is a technology company. We provide technology that allows applications to interpret web pages like a human being. So um, we've discovered that the entire internet can be classified into about 30 different page types. Uh, what that means is that even though there's like a, essentially an, an infinite number of web pages on the web, there are certain common uh, layouts and um, structure, people ways humans structure web pages that are understandable. Now, now for people who aren't uh, technology people, mm -hmm. why, why, does a, why does a developer need to know this? Why, what, are we, uh, what are you trying to do with this data? Yeah, that you're that's studying? a good question. So developers are always trying to use web data, for example, right? That's why geeks like us created things like RSS, right? And ways of syndicating data, essentially creating this machine readable layer of the internet, right? But as we've seen, adoption of those kinds of like semantic formats, open graph, for example, like that, have never really taken off because there's kind of a chicken and egg problem, right? What we hope to do is create artificial intelligence software that can uh, automatically understand, you know, what's the layout versus what's the actual information and extract that automatically without humans having to create those annotations themselves. Yeah, and so uh, if I'm building a new kind of magazine, for instance, mm -hmm. I need to know what the title of an article is, or what the body is, or right. where, where the picture is. That's yeah, associated. exactly. Is that what you're studying when you look at when your uh, mm -hmm. when your bot looks at one of these pages? Yeah. So we extract different kinds of things from the different page types, right? So um, of these 30 page types, um, two of the ones that we have APIs for right now are front pages and article pages, right? So you mentioned magazines. So for magazines, like article pages are obviously really important, right? So we can look at, you know, if you imagine a, your typical article page, we can analyze the visual structure of that page, and we can parse out like, what was the title, who wrote the article, the text of the article, what's like the most, the picture that best represents the article, if there's any video on that page, like what should be the video that represents that article, and yeah. also we have uh, like NLP technology that can um, identify what the topic of the article is. So if an article mentioned Barack Obama, we would know that it's probably about politics, right? We know the difference between like Apple the fruit and like Apple the, the computer company. Oh, that's cool. Old school spiders, like the ones mm -hmm. that the Google kids built, looked at the HTML of the pages, right? So they right, would see yeah. H1 is probably a headline and mm -hmm. B is a, a body copy. Yeah. Are you looking at the HTML or are you looking at some at more a visual representation of what, the page? We're, we're, we're looking more, because uh, we see like the commonality of the web is in how things are designed, right? Um, you as a human, if you would look at a page written in like Arabic or, or, or Urdu or, or, or Korean or whatever, you may not have any idea what it says on that page, but by just looking at the, the layout and design, you can know in, instantly this is an article page, right? This is a front page. So what we look at on a page is not like the H1s or tags or any kind of markup on the, within the document or within that web page, but uh, actually we look at stuff like what are the x, y coordinates of like these parts of the page? How much screen real estate is it given? Uh, how is it positioned relatively to everything else? What kind of fonts were used? Whether it's bold, what colors, you know, what, what borders, those kind of things. The visual information that like humans perceive, we've trained a robot to essentially extract that completely automatically. Yep. So Huffington Post has tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of articles. How long does it take your uh, robot to go through s something of that size and, and index it? Yeah, so our goal isn't to index any, any site or the entire web or all that. Yeah. Um, what we have released right now is a, an on-demand API type format. So it's kind of like a REST API where 
you as a software developer can pass in the URL of a particular page, like the front page of the Huffington Post or a particular article page, and we'll, we'll run our analysis on that, on that web page and return back all that information. Oh, very that, cool. Yeah. So uh, somebody like Twitter or mm -hmm. Google Plus or, or AOL editions, yeah. which we're going to see in a, a little while, they can ask for a page mm -hmm. and ask you for all the layout information of that page? Is yeah, that sort of I, what they're asking? Right, exactly. Like Twitter's a great example because all you have in tweets are like the links, right? And if you want to present like a, a richer experience out of that, you'd, you'd want more information about what, what is at that link. Right. So you could pass uh, that URL to DiffBot and we could analyze that and pull out, hey, that link actually has a title, it has an image, it has a video behind it, it has this text and tell you what the topics of that of that page were if you wanted to do like personalization in your own like new hybrid Twitter client. So so when I talk to your API, what do you feed back to me and what and mm -hmm. and what format is it in and how would I use that? Like if I was Flipboard or something right. like that, yeah. I wanted to use your API to make make it easier for me to lay out a page. So it's really, really simple. You just pass in a URL, right? You pass in your developer token yeah. and you get back a JSON that has all these fields in it. So for the article API, those fields would be like the title, who, who the author of that is. This is all done visually, yep. you know, like who, um, so the author who wrote it, um, the text, the actual, you know, text. And if it's like a multi-page article, it'll actually visually identify the next page thing and follow all those. So like if it's like oh, New York wow. Times where there's like ten pages, right? It'll yep. follow all those so that and make one big and make long. one big thing because that's what you really care about as a developer, right? And not yep. dealing with all these like site specific intricacies. Is there any way for it to tell the kind of publishing or republishing mm -hmm. rules that the publisher has? Like the, the New York Times only wants 200 characters of its oh, articles. Right. Do, is there any way for you to tell that the New York well, Times doesn't want you to republish the whole article? Well, not visually. We haven't gotten to the point where we can automatically read privacy and copyright policies. Yeah. <laughs> but, we're but I know Flipboard looks at the RSS mm -hmm. feed for that, right? Mm -hmm. Because in the RSS feed it only has 200 characters and they assume that's a... Uh, a, a copyright uh, rule, I guess. Right, yeah, yeah. and um, that's that's a good question, but it's not something that we really address because we're more of just like a, a tool or a service, right? Yeah. We actually, in our API, um, you can actually post your document or your, your web page to us. If you don't want us to fetch, you know, the page directly from, from the site or URL. So if you have your own, like, private intranet and you have your own web pages in there, that are not accessible by our crawler, you can actually just send them to us. We'll analyze it and give you back like the JSON. Very cool. How, what, tell me about the business you're trying to build. How are you going to make money with this? We started this working on this research a long time ago. So back when I was at Stanford yeah. as a grad student, there was a quarter where I was taking eight CS courses. Yeah. So I created DiffBot as a tool to, I could add all my class web pages to DiffBot. Obviously class pages don't have RSS, right? Most of the web doesn't have RSS. Right. And DiffBot would, a w uh, let me know, it would send a message to my cell phone whenever new lecture slides were posted, whenever uh, new homework assignments or class announcements were posted, so I could basically have an edge on all, all, my, uh, all my classmates. Very cool. And because I've always been fascinated with AI and um, my background is in like computer vision and understanding this type of structure, I realized that the algorithm could be expanded not just to class web pages, but to the entire internet, all the different page types that exist. So. We started working on some early prototypes. About two years ago, um, Stanford started this, uh, s this uh, incubator program. You know, it's now called StartX. Yep. So uh, about 70 Stanford teams applied during that first, um, that first session. And we were the only team that was chosen. We, uh, so they funded, they gave us seed funding to, to develop this research. Yep. And so um, that's where we are today. And, and do you have an idea of how you're going to turn this into a business where you're getting yeah. revenues? Cause For now, what we're focusing some, on. Someday, yeah. investors <laughs> like to get paid back. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Twitter, <laughs> then they, they still want to get paid back. <laughs> For now, what we're, fo what we're focusing on is um, essentially training our core um, algorithm, our core visual understanding algorithm on these 30 different page types, and then letting developers use our technology in the form of these APIs. and. Uh, we are going to start basically charging developers access to these APIs if they use them within their app. So there's like a, a very generous like free tier where they can they can test and build stuff for like you get a high number of API calls, but then when they go beyond that, they would just like pay like kind of per call. 
Makes sense. Yeah. It's a new kind of business, isn't it? Yeah. It's really <laughs> crazy. So uh, if you go to diffbot.com uh, slash showcase, you can see examples of some of these um, pilot projects. So we have hundreds of developers already right now uh, building apps on top of the diffbot API. Uh, so if you go to diffbot.com slash showcase, you can see some of these. Like uh, one great example is like um, this one guy built like a radio station powered by diffbot. Um, he, uh, his father's blind, right? And uh, he, uh, if you're blind, it's really hard to use the web. You know, screen readers will just read all the text starting from the beginning, like nav bar, home, you know, you know go front page. They'll, they'll read like the privacy policy and all that. But if you know like what's the important part of the page, using a technology like DiffBot, you can have a much better experience right, as a blind yeah. person. Right? So what he did is he built this thing called Hacker News Radio that just is kind of a proof of concept that pulls in Hacker News RSS feed, takes the articles, and then passes it through to DiffBot API to get the actual text. And then through like male and female voices, it's like a radio station that, wow. that you can listen to. Another kind of cool example is like the city of Sao Paulo's Twitter account has about 50, 15,000 Sao Paulo uh, Polistanos yeah. that um, follow what's going on in their city, uh, and that their Twitter feed is completely powered by DiffBot. So what someone did over there is they connected some stodgy old uh, government website to DiffBot, and whenever DiffBot detects structurally like that a bit of city news has come out, it automatically generates a tweet. So now, instead of not knowing what's going on in your city, since everyone's on social networks, they can know what, what's going on in their community. It's really great. Yeah. Well, thanks for changing the world. This is really cool stuff. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot for coming. We're really honored to have you. Thank you very much. <laughs>